Hello. Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make mechanical rigging and animation in Blender. Let's get started the lecture. We have a car engine that consists of one piston, piston road, and crankshaft. I will share the download link in the description. Shortly, the piston is pushed down by pressure of the combustion. The piston pushes down the piston rod, and the piston rod rotates the crankshaft. Let's go over viewport shading, and click on the matcap tab. Select the orange color shading. Enable the cavity option. So, we can see the model better in the viewport. Also hide the cylinder in the viewport for now. Press numpad 3 to switch to right orthographic view. We have three joint points in this mechanism. Let's get started the rigging. Firstly, let's add a bone for the piston road. Select the piston, press shift S, and cursor to select it. So, 3D cursor will snap to just middle of the first joint point. Press shift A, armature, and add single bone. We cannot see through the model. With the bone selected, click on the Object Data Properties tab, go to Viewport Display section, and enable the In Front option. Let's rotate the bone 180 degrees so that its tail points downward. Press Ctrl A, and apply the rotation. The head of the bone is pivot point. When we try to rotate the bone, it will rotate around this pivot point. Now, Let's connect the tail of the bone to second joint point. Select the piston road, press shift S, and cursor to select it. Select the bone, switch to edit mode. Select the tail point of the bone, press shift S, and selection to cursor. So, it will snap to second joint. Click on the bone properties tab, and rename the bone as Piston Road. Now, let's add a bone for the piston. Select the head of the Piston Road bone, hit the E key, then Z key, and extrude on the Z axis. Select the bone, right click, and switch the bone direction. Rename the bone as Piston. When we try to move the piston bone, we can see that it is not connected to other bone. In order to connect the bones, firstly select the piston road bone, hold down shift key, then select the piston bone. So, the piston bone will be active selection. Press Ctrl P, and click on the connected. So, piston bone will be parent of the piston road bone. Let's switch to pose mode, and see how it works. Switch to edit mode again, and select the tail of the piston road bone. Press E key, then Z key, and extrude the bone on the Z axis. This bone will be crankshaft bone. Rename the bone as crankshaft. Go to object mode, select the crankshaft. Press shift S, and cursor to select it. Select the armature. Go back to edit mode again. Select the tail of the crankshaft bone, press shift S, and selection to cursor. So, it will be snapped to third joint. Now, let's bind the model to the bones. To do that, switch to object mode, firstly select the piston, then, hold down shift key and select the armature. Switch to pose mode. Select the piston bone. Press Ctrl P. Set the bone as parent of the piston. Hit the R key, and rotate the bone. As you can see, the piston rotates together with this bone. Let's bind the other bones in the same way. Switch back to object mode, select the piston road, then select the armature. Switch to pose mode, select the piston road bone. Press Ctrl P, and set the bone as parent of the piston road.
Finally, bind the crankshaft bone to crankshaft. Switch to edit mode, select the crankshaft bone, press Alt P, and clear parent. So, crankshaft bone will be independent of the other bones. Because this will be inverse kinematics bone. It should be independent so that the other bones follow this bone. In the pose mode, select the piston road bone. Click on the bone constraint properties tab, and add inverse kinematics constraints. Select the armature as target, select the crankshaft bone as sub-target. Now, select the crankshaft bone, hit the G key and move around. As you can see, other bones follow this bone. Inverse kinematics works properly. However, when we move the IK bone out, the other bones are not stretching, and their connections are broken. To fix this problem, we need a stretch bone. Let's switch to edit mode, and select the head of the piston bone. Hit the E key, then Z key, and extrude the bone on the Z axis. Rename the bone as stretch. Right click, and switch the bone direction. We need to connect this bone to armature. To do that, select the piston bone, hold down shift key, then select the stretch bone. Press Ctrl P, and connect it. Now, it is connected to other bones. Switch to pose mode, select the stretch bone. Click on the bone properties tab, scroll down to inverse kinematics section. Set the IK stretch value all the way up to 1. Select the crankshaft bone, and try to move around. As you can see, the engine parts are not disconnecting, and they are following the IK bone properly. It is time to animate the engine. What we gonna do is, to rotate the crankshaft bone on the x-axis, and add rotation keyframes. However, when we try to rotate the bone, it rotates around its pivot point. We want the bone rotates around the shaft pivot point. So, we need to change the pivot point. To do that, switch to edit mode. Select the crankshaft bone, press shift D and duplicate the bone. Move on the x-axis. This will be IK controller bone. Right click and switch the bone direction. Now, we need to connect the crankshaft bone to this controller bone. Firstly, select the crankshaft bone, hold down shift, then select the controller bone. Press Ctrl P, and keep offset. Let's switch to pose mode, and rotate the controller bone on the X axis. There we go. Rename the bone as controller. Unhide the cylinder on the viewport again. When we rotate the bone, the piston is not moving up and down along the cylinder. We want to constrain its movement on the Z-axis. To do that, select the stretch bone, scroll down to inverse kinematics section. Enable the locking movement around the X-axis. In the same way, select the piston bone, enable the lock X-axis. Let's rotate the controller bone again. There we go. It works properly. Now, let's add rotation keyframes, and animate the engine. With the controller bone selected, scroll up to transform section, and switch to XYZ Euler mode. At frame 1, hit the I key on the viewport, and add a rotation keyframe. Go to frame 60, Rotate the controller bone minus 360 degrees on the x-axis. Hit the I key again, and add another rotation keyframe. Jump to first frame, and play the animation. There we go. It works properly. Now, we need to make cyclic this animation. So, it can last till end frame of the timeline. On the timeline editor, press shift E and make cyclic. Set the end frame of the timeline to 300.
play the animation again. As you can see, the animation will last till frame 300 by repeating. It is time to get render. We'll get viewport render. Firstly, let's go over the viewport shading. Click on the matcap tab, and choose the metallic shiny shader. We can also change the viewport world color. Hide the armature in the viewport. Disable the viewport overlays. Press numpad 3 and switch to front view. Click on the output properties tab, and set the resolution to 1080 pixel. Scroll down to output section, and choose the folder you want to save your file. Set the file format as MPEG, and switch the container to MPEG4. Go to view menu, and render animation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.